Welcome to EFTM. This could be the world's first 360 degree car review. We're in the 7 Series BMW, the 740i. This thing is $244,000 on road and it is basically a mass produced Rolls Royce. So let's uh, take it for a spin. Uh, these cameras here, if you want to have a look over at the uh, front infotainment screen, basically now I've got reverse cameras, but I've also got a choice to, to look from different angles. So if I choose this one here, it'll actually scroll around and I can get this kind of 3D view of the car. And that view will actually maintain itself as I reverse out here. So um, that's pretty cool. So this is the six cylinder, there is a V8 uh, option. You'll end up paying around $300,000 if, uh, if you go the V8 plus all the other bits and bobs. Uh, but you know, this has laser headlights, it has huge, beautiful chrome wheels. Um, this is a glorious motor vehicle. The reason I said the Rolls Royce is because we drove the Rolls Royce Ghost Series 2 last year. And to be honest, you know, made by BMW, a lot of the functionality is the same, a lot of the menu systems are the same. It is essentially drawing from all the BMW technology these days so um, this kind of feels the same it's a big car it is a little floaty in the steering which is just what you want when you're trying to have a relaxed drive so um, yeah it's uh, it feels like a Rolls Royce that's come off the production line as, uh, as Bowen said to me um, when we were talking about it the other day um, it's very hard to fault they've gone for an LCD um, display for the dash which is excellent because when you change uh, modes you, know, you get a full change dash so we're in eco mode now and there's also a sport mode which uh, is pretty pretty in your face red gonna keep the comfort mode though and aside from that you've got all your base this is a very much a BMW uh, all the BMW infotainment uh, options in here uh, DAB radio uh, but if you want to just have a look out the back there, if you just twist your phone around or use your mouse to twist the twist the screen around, in the centre console of the back, so the armrest, is a Samsung 7-8 uh, inch tablet uh, that is used to control uh, pretty much anything you want in uh, in the car. The, um, the people in the back can actually press a button on that touchscreen to put the blinds up and down. They can, they can control the music, they can also view things like uh, driving conditions, so they can look at the map where we are, they can, I, I haven't seen it because I haven't been back there, but they can see uh, information about the car as we drive. Uh, so, you know, very much as the other half lives. Uh, and you can also put those apps onto your phone and use your phone then to connect uh, to the vehicle. All in all, it's the lap of luxury, really. Uh, but let's have a look at it on the freeway, some of those automated driving, as they like to call them, because uh, there are a lot of tech features on this car once you're out on the road. All right, so let's take this thing onto the freeway. You can see, if you have a look at the infotainment screen there, you'll see on the map, we're just going to turn onto the M2 motorway in Sydney. Now, there's two, uh, two buttons I need to turn on here. The first one is cruise control. Uh, which you'll be familiar with and this is obviously adaptive cruise control so it'll set a distance and maintain a gap I can control the gap with this button here on the dashboard the other one is uh, lane guidance so the lane guidance you know let's not kid ourselves Tesla have got all the publicity around lane guidance um, because their cars when you set this and in the Tesla you double tap and uh, you let go and it will just guide itself through the through the roads now this BMW, among many others, and the other makes as well, will do the same thing. However, it will continue to tell you to put your hands back on the steering wheel. Uh, you get a little notification in here and on the head-up display, which you can't see, um, to put your hands back on the wheel. Um, but as I relax my hands on the wheel here, the car is turning itself through this corner. And I'm really just here to have control when needed. Now I've driven this road probably three or four times since I've had this car and basically you end up paying more attention to the road around you than the road that you're on uh, or the path that you need to take because the car's got that basic path under control. Um, so you don't need to, to worry about you know, everything else. You can just focus on the traffic, the cars, make sure that you're staying safe in your lane. So I'm not going to be honest, this is the kind of autonomous driving that I want right now, which is 
just take the load off me and let me concentrate on the road. As soon as you have a car, this is what I've found, as soon as you've had a car that you can sit and drive along with your hands off the wheel, which I'm just not going to do, even though this car is absolutely capable of it, um, you relax. And when you relax, you're not focused on the road. And while you have other people around you, 99.999% of them, not in autonomous cars, that's a massive risk. So this car, for all intents and purposes, can drive itself. In, in, the, in Europe, it can back itself out of your garage with the click of a button on the key. Unfortunately, that's not available here in Australia. Now, there's one other thing on this car which we haven't talked about, which is because I don't think it has massive appeal, but the volume knobs away, way over there. But what I can do is I can simply point at the screen and turn the volume up like this. You'll see the volume the going up. The field, it was, uh, Lewis Garcia, and that's just basically reading my finger movements. Now, I probably need a lesson from BMW in all the available finger movements, uh, but you can swipe through screens, you can do all those things. But actually, just for turn the volume up, not bad at all.